Hi friends, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're actually talking about data scientists and applied scientist role. I specifically wanted to dedicate this video because I see there's a lot of conversations on YouTube about data analyst role, data engineering role, machine learning role, but there's not enough conversations that are discussing applied scientist role specifically when we're comparing it to data scientists, how is it different and what do applied scientists actually do? So I wanted to dedicate this video to talk about it because based on my experience, applied scientists is one of the highest paid role in the data science job family. And I'll talk about it specifically why it is the highest paid role. Not, not every company has this role. There are very certain set of companies that have this role specifically in big tech, the applied science role exists. So you can pick up any of the big tech companies and you can start looking for these roles and you will find the title applied scientist there. As companies grow bigger and bigger, they start dissecting the data science job family and the roles within it even further because the scope of the project is huge and for it's not possible for one person uh, such as like a data scientist or a data analyst to manage the entire scope of the project. So you'll start seeing a lot of roles that are like very niche down and applied scientists, I wouldn't say like it's the niche down role, but it is one of the high demand roles in the data science job family. So if you find content in today's video helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about data science, tech, and everything else in between. So following the same framework that I've used in some of my other videos, where we segment, where we categorize the skills required for each role, um, there is the framework that I like to use is basically we start with the knowledge of statistics, programming, software and tooling, and as well if there's any other skills that are required, which is goes in the other bucket. So when we're looking at the data scientist and the applied scientist role, I think it's important in order to understand the applied scientist role, it's important to understand how it's similar and how it's different from the data scientist role itself. So let's talk about it. So when we're looking at the data scientist role in terms of the math category, so advanced statistics knowledge is required for the data scientist role. And for applied scientists, this is also true. So that's similar. The second I want to talk about is programming. So when it comes to programming for data scientist role, you typically are supposed to know SQL for extracting data and as well as uh, scripting languages, uh, object oriented programming languages such as R and Python or all three SQL, Python, R. For applied scientists, and this is exactly where it stand, starts to differ. For applied scientists, you need to know SQL you need to know the scripting languages, Python or R, but you also need to know a language that can live in a production environment. And I will talk about it in later in the video why that's important. So those languages, the production environment language could be Python, like Python lives in a production environment. Um, it could be Java, it could be C Sharp, um, it could be any other language that is, for example, if you work at company X, the company X uses their framework is written all in Java. So for applied scientists, they would have to have a very solid understanding of Java in addition to the data science languages that I mentioned previously. And that also translates to the third category, which I'm going to talk about is software and tooling. So for software and tooling, as I have mentioned in my previous videos, um, you would be using uh, obviously some ETL tools to extract the data from the database, as well as um, tools for doing your analysis, such as working with RStudio, Jupyter Notebooks, Google Collab. For applied science, you would need to know that. Plus, you would also need to have a very solid understanding of how your companies or your team's code review process works, which means that they will have to have like very solid understanding of good understanding of code review process, like how to check in and check out code, how to push the code to production and things like that. And the last, which is the other bucket, um, for a data scientist, um, you need to have a solid communication skills, machine learning skills, 
Um, and for apply scientists, that is also true. You need to have good communication skills and you need to have a very solid understanding of machine learning. I would say applied scientist role is more in depth of machine learning. So they're basically able to write their own machine learning models from scratch. And that requires to, for them to have very solid understanding of the math and the math behind the machine learning models. All right, so now we know what are the similarities between the two roles. We also know what are the differences between the two roles. You can kind of like get an idea and get a sense of what actually applied scientist does. So if you didn't get it from my mention in the, when I was going through those categories, basically an applied scientist, you can think of a two role. So a data scientist times a software engineer. So applied scientist role combines these two roles, puts them into one, and they are basically a data scientist who can productionize their own model. Basically for a data scientist, when you are building those models, you often have to work with the software engineering team to productionize your model and put that in a production environment if that's what you work with. But for applied scientists, since they are two in one in a way, they are able to write their own models and they are able to productionize their own models themselves because it's a hybrid role between software engineering and um, data scientists. And you will see that applied scientist role typically require that you meet the software engineering bar as well. So there will be a lot of algorithm and coding interview related questions to test your production level ability to code in a production environment, basically. So the interview is structured more uh, like a hybrid interview for a software engineer and a data scientist combined into one. Where are these applied scientists coming from? <laughs> because when we go into like, you probably have seen like these master's program that are available that are there for people to become a data scientist. A lot of these programs are graduating students to become a data scientist generalist. Since applied science require a lot of um, coding knowledge, uh, a lot of uh, fundamentals uh, of programming and advanced programming as well, they are typically, what, what I have seen in the industry is there are a lot of software engineers who are interested in becoming data scientists. Since they already have the fundamentals of software engineering down, they would take courses in statistics and machine learning and learn all the basically the, the fundamentals of the data science job family and they will transition into the applied scientist role. I personally haven't seen a specific master's program curated, the curriculum that is curated, targeted toward turning students into applied scientists. So there are not many of them out there because uh, so far what we have seen is that a lot of software engineering end up transitioning into data science and they basically take the role of an applied scientist. So here, one big tip that I would give to students, I get a lot of questions. There would be students who are just starting out in the, their university and they're in their CS program. They realize that they wanna get into data science. So, um, and they almost wanna quit the, their computer science program and uh, go into data science and take some other courses. My advice to, to them always is to do not quit your computer science program because there is this job family called applied scientists which is perfect for you, especially if you enjoy doing the computer science, like if you enjoy coding and if you're a solid programmer, but you are also interested in data science, you are actually very well qualified for this role. The reason I say that is because applied scientists, specifically at my last company where I was working as a data scientist, applied scientist was one of the highest paid job family within the company, within the entire company. And the reason for that was because it was combining two very in high demand skill set into one role. So let's say if you're taking computer science right now, do not drop out of the program. Instead, try to add the data science skill set, the courses related to data science skill set to that, to your cur curriculum. And that could be statistics, that could be like machine learning, that could be like data analysis, presentation and things like that because if you are able to continue with that, you are now, once you graduate, you're basically a very highly qualified candidate within this whole data size umbrella and you're gonna be very in high demand and not only that, you're actually gonna get paid very well. So that was my thoughts on the applied science job family. Honestly, if I could do it all over again, I'll actually go back to school. I will do a computer science degree and I will add all the data science electives um, to my degree 
and basically work as an applied scientist because I feel like it combines the best of both worlds, the software engineering and data science. But surprisingly, I don't see a lot of people talking about it. So that's why I specifically wanted to dedicate a video to it. So hopefully you're more educated about this role after watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the applied science role. Have you come across this role in your job search? And what are your thoughts on combining the two roles, the data science and software engineering into one role? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. I will talk to you in another video. Bye.